This is my 1901 White Family Rotary. And what I'm going to be doing today um, is working with the zigzagger. Now, I've had the zigzagger on it yesterday, and this zigzagger is not quite as um, convenient as the Singer zigzaggers. Um, and by that, I mean there's no lever to leave it on the machine all the time and just disengage the zigzagger. In addition, you have to loosen the bobbin tension on the bobbin case each time you use the zigzagger. And what I found yesterday is that I needed the machine tension all the way to number eight to really get a good zigzag stitch. And um, there's still a little bit of a pucker in the fabric. So overall, not as good a zigzagger as the Singer zigzagger, which doesn't seem to um, get that pucker between the stitches. But at the same time, I'm trying to make this my main machine. So I have a face mask that's all ready to sew. This is a five layer, and I have it pinned. All the layers are sewn already, um, the liner layers. I have it pinned where I'd be adding the elastic. And what I'm going to try and do today um, is finish this mask with the zigzagger on the machine. Um, the the whole it's not an exact science and um you're gonna have to fiddle with the tension and the bobbin tension with each fabric with each project so these are what i'm going to be making um you know more or less on a regular basis so if i can get the zigzag settings accurate for two layers of cotton and the inner three layers of a mask and get a decent zigzag stitch through all these layers and still be able to go over to the elastic, um, that will be a real plus for this machine. Now, I can already do all of that in straight stitch. So this is going to be about tweaking the tension um, with this particular project. Okay, I think that's just a tad blurry on the needle portion, which I'll fix in a minute. Um, so you have to assume that you have the instructions and that you have put the zigzagger on the machine the way that it's supposed to be on there. You've loosened the bobbin case, uh, the bobbin tension, and right now I have the upper tension set at about seven. Now the next thing to do is make sample fabrics. Now even though that's a face mask um, and not a very big, it's not like it's a big huge project that I've cut out and I don't want to ruin it, um, you still, it's better to make little samples that you can use. Now the issue that I've been having with the zigzagger is uh, getting it to have the correct, um, a lock stitch is balanced when the tensions from the upper thread and the bobbin thread keep the stitch lock in the center of the fabric. So what was happening yesterday and I'll probably be able to show you in a moment, um, was that the lock was actually not in the center of the fabric layers. It was um, all on the back of the fabric, and the bobbin thread was not pulling to each side to keep the, the each zigzag stitch in place. Um, so Right now I have the machine set on seven. This is uh, cotton, polyester cotton, um, fairly thin, same weight as the muslin, and the center layer is a face mask fabric um, that is the lining on my five layer face mask. So I just want to bring up the thread. Um, Kind of get it out of the way. Which 
may or may not be easy to do. There we go. So we get that upper thread tail out of the way before we start. Um, my arm is going to be a shadow just until I get going here. Well, that's interesting. Oh, the bobbin case fell out into the oil pan. So let's stop and fix that. Now that actually very rarely happens. Um, and when it does happen, you obviously um, pick it up, get it out of there. But more importantly, um, get all the, if there were any extra bobbin loops um, in the way. I must just not have had it in there quite correctly. So let's start again. I think that's only happened like twice to me with this machine. But if you don't um, have the bobbin in the case correctly or for a couple of reasons, that could happen. Okay, so all I'm doing, and I didn't take the pin out, there's a pin on the other side. I didn't raise the bobbin thread like the I did the first time. Um, and this is a very tight a narrow stitch. But what I'm doing is just checking and seeing where are we. So that's sloppy. And if you were doing like a coat or something, that's not what you want it to look like. So now, this is the tweaking part. I'm going to put the fabric back under there. I'm going to change the width of the actual stitch. That's the narrowest stitch, and um, it looks like it just wasn't moving along very well. The fabric wasn't moving toward the back. So let's make it a wider zigzag. But it, it did look like I may have the tension correct for this particular project. Now on the top, it looks fine. And I'm trying to figure out if that's pulling toward the center on the back. It is. Now, so there's the top. And let's fix the lighting here. So there's the top. It looks fine. Here's the bottom, and um, what you see is really a thread going down the center of the stitching, which means the tension on the upper thread is not pulling the bobbin thread to the left or the right enough to actually make a neat looking zigzag on the back. So as I said, I have the tension at 7, so now Let's put it to eight. Put the camera back down. Get the pin out of the way. So this is now set at the uh, most tension for this machine. Without changing the bottom tension. So again, on the top, it looks fine. Let me get these loose threads out of the way. And now on the bottom, it looks fine. 
Um, one of the video segments I made, um, the, the volume and the noise was all wrong. I don't know what happened. But this is where I left off. So I'm filling in here a little bit. This is um, right here on the left, the bottom side. Um, and you can see how it looks perfect. With the exception of um, not quite as defined as it could be. So the next step is to keep the tension at 8, <clears throat> but to loosen the bobbin um, case thread just a little bit more. Now that's my bobbin case with the bobbin in it. Now when I started this, this morning, the screw, the mark on the screw was about headed in that direction about like that so I've moved it about a sixteenth of an inch and I'm just going to move it a little more put the camera down again now at first I didn't like the idea of having to change the bobbin tension because I'm used to a singer where you don't really fiddle with the bobbin tension at all. And now we make sure it's actually in there this time. So what this does, um, the advantage this will be over, say, the, um, the VS2B is um, sometimes I just like to stitch with a zigzag stitch. And so if I can get this to a point where I feel I know what I'm doing with a zigzagger, you know, the, the modern comparable thing is just setting your machine to zigzag and picking a stitch width. Um, but with this, um, you have to figure it out a little bit more. But once you get it set, what you've actually learned in the meantime, they can't teach you when you just slide a stitch. So now, if you do use a modern machine, and you see that your zigzag stitch is off a little bit, um, you'll have a better idea of why, even if it's a modern electric machine. You'll understand which tension might be off. And this is now just about perfect for this fabric. And we're looking at this one. I don't know why there's a gap there, but things like that, I don't think. Um, it's just the way the fabric moves through. And to correct that, you change on this machine. They still give you pressure control over the presser foot. So I can change that a little bit. So that the fabric feeds more evenly. In this case, I would increase it. Just a tad. So now if I were using my 6212 um, and my zigzag stitches look like this, or even a 237, which probably wouldn't do this to begin with, um, I now know I can look at, at this and I can say, well, wait a minute, which tension is acting up? Which one do I have to change? But here, so now I now have the white family rotary with a zigzag on it, and I can go ahead and make a face mask in zigzag. I already know this machine will go through these layers without a problem. And um, 
it took about 15 minutes but now if my fabrics are similar I don't have to change the machine now the last thing I want to add here is um, why I'm doing this really when you make a face mask you have curves on the side and on these five layers I'm going to have to stitch down here so um, I may be changing the um, width of the zigzag stitch a little bit more or I may open it up a little bit more and um, have a little more room be between stitches but why am I using this why am I being a little bit picky and saying you know what I want this to work I'll tell you why with a face mask and curves with the nose curve what you want is a flexible seam so when you straight stitch anything um, and you're tighter than if you're at 10 stitches per inch and you're straight stitching you're really making a rigid seam doing um, almost the same but with a zigzag stitch you have more flexibility in the seam so what that means is when you put on these are five layer I've had two people tell me um, that they work and when they work they're a little bit snug so especially on a five layer mask you want that stretchability in your seam so person A puts this on and you know they have a kind of a smaller face and it just sits there and doesn't stretch person B puts it on their slightly wider face and the fabric needs to be taut well the zigzag stitch is going to allow that to happen while still holding the material together and if you keep it close enough so I may actually already be where I need to be with that if you keep it close enough you're not having like an open loose seam that contaminants could come in um, so I'm not looking for a decorative zigzag which is really what the the singer uh, cam zigzagger is great at I'm looking at a practical flexible seam that can go over the elastic that can make pleats when I'm done with this that can make a face mask so that the entire fitting of the face mask is um, flexible now if you take that to the rest of your clothing items um, underarms you would underarms and shoulder um, under a whole underarm thing um, that half circle that's the underarm do the whole thing in zigzag and when you pull your shoulders forward you don't get that tight stretch across your back you get flexibility so this is why the old machines and both the singer book and the white sewing course even if you're not going to make clothes the way they tell you to make clothes what they're telling you are the secrets of sewing why you use a zigzag seam instead of a straight seam so I have been making masks since March I've only done top stitching zigzag on a couple of them because somebody I know happened to like zigzag but now I'm taking that to the actual foundation level of sewing and using it simply because it's a more flexible seam okay now let's look at the face mask and see how this went then this is kind of the art of the vintage zigzag now one thing you're going to run into um, because what these old zigzaggers do is move the fabric um, so it takes practice to get your seams perfectly straight so you can see my little dip there but then as soon as I saw that I got better as you can see on the other side two areas of the face mask gave me a little bit of a hassle um, at the bottom which I had to go over a second time because of all of this fabric in the way 
and then at the top for the same reason. Um, but if I were to do these all the time, um, before I got to each area, I would lift up the presser foot, fit all of this under there. That's quite a bit to fit under there, and then go. Um, so, as a top stitch, it's a little bit messy, except for over here where... Um, and then, this is wider, because I stopped, I pulled the pin out, and I put the elastic under um, the presser foot of the zigzagger. So, this is not, at this point, my most beautiful stitching. What it is is a face mask that will hold together with a flexible seam. And then, you know, if I were to do this all the time, like I said, all of that would just naturally get better. Um, one thing I'm going to do before I turn this right side out is go back over the elastic. And this machine doesn't have a reverse, so I'm just going to go down each side again and really hold that elastic in place, and it'll give me the opportunity to straighten this out because that would be a little bit of pucker on this side. So I'll just go down in a straight line. But absolutely doable. And the other side is fine. That's stay stitching um, from the lining fabric that's under there. The other side is fine. Now, um, here it is turned right side out. It's not finished yet. I have to do um, the nose bridge area. I have to put in the nose bridge and the pleats and do the top stitching. Now, in my case, this is probably where the second machine comes in. I have my 99 on the table and um, I also have to stitch the center seams. Now, I don't mind um, a messy inner seam, but I'm not sure I want, um, right now with the way my zigzagging is, I don't know that I want the, the top stitching to be like that. So in my case, what I would do is do several of these to this stage, then take them to the 99 and finish them um, by putting the pleats in and the nose bridge and the top stitching with a straight stitch. Um, so, let me see, I have a coat to make. I can do all the seams with this. I have um, pants I want to make out of plaid wool and plaid flannel. Um, the wool especially, I would use a zigzag stitch to match the fabric. Um, I wouldn't use it for quilting or decorative top stitching. I, what I would do is then um, switch to the Singer Zigzagger on the 99. So each machine is going to have some limitation or some specific use. Technically, could I finish this mask like that? Yes. Would I go very slow to make sure that my stitches look very neat? Yes. But because face masks are kind of needed, um, I'm more likely to use the two machines. And the, the, the only reason I need the, two, the second machine is because to do this in straight stitch, and this is the drawback um, versus Singer, I have to take this off, change the bobbin tension back to normal, and change the upper thread tension back to normal to do the straight stitching. So if I'm going to make one mask a day, I don't need two machines. If I'm going to make five or ten or fifteen masks at a time, I would use this, get them all to this stage, and then take them all over to the 99 and finish them on the 99. But this has shown me that um, if you read through the White Sewing Course, which is an old book from 1937, it's really kind of sexist um, in a lot of their phrases, but if you read between the lines and what they're teaching you about how to fit garments and things like that, 
what like I said, they're the secrets of sewing. And if you um, take that to other applications, um, you're taking that knowledge. But so that book is from 1937. This machine is from 1901. Um, these zigzaggers were like a miracle in 1901. Can you imagine? You can make a zigzag stitch. So we have to keep it all in perspective. We can't expect the machines to be, um, you know, like today's machines. And thank goodness they aren't.